It's in, 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 in. You know what the new in thing is for Christians? Man, it's not going to eat soul food at the church or going to rock some chicken and waffles at the church, man. It's not Christian boy bands. The new in thing for Christians today, for young and single Christians today, the new in thing is being in a relationship with somebody you are unequally yoked with. That's it, man. Everybody's doing it, man. It's like the new thing, man. It's like popping like Justin Bieber and whatnot, man. Like, this is the thing to do. If you're single, if you fly, if you're saved, if you're a Christian, the new thing for you to do is get in a relationship with another individual that does not share your same Christian beliefs, does not live by the same standards you live by, and does not love your God. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about why are there so many fly single safe Christians in relationships that are completely ungodly, carnal, and do not give God glory. It's going to be deep today. But before we get into it, KING IT! That's the epidemic that's taking the church by storm right now. It's young, single, safe, fly Christians being involved in relationships with men and women, with people that do not love the God they claim to serve and that died for them on the cross. Why, Boom Chica? Why you want to be with him, Boom Chica? He don't love your God. He don't serve your God. And she be like, well, I don't care. Like, we in love. Come on, dude, for real? How many people you know that are going through drama right now in their life because they profess to be a Christian, but they're yoked up with somebody that's an unbeliever? The Bible says our life is not our own, that, that we were bought with a price, that the life we live, we should live to the glory and honor of God. So why is it so many single saved black Christians are not consulting the Bible, not even getting biblical counsel, and getting in relationships with people that they're unequally yoked with? <laughs> So you're probably sitting there like, hold on, brother, man, what does unequally yoke mean? I never heard that word before, but break it down. What is that word? Man, okay, the word finds its origin in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, where the Bible talks about, talking to the Corinthian church about being joined together with certain kinds of people. If you look in the context, it talks about, man, what does light and darkness have in common? What does Christ have in common with an idol or with a false god? If you look at all those comparisons, righteousness, light, Christ, and a false god, all those things are different by nature. And what the Bible says, it says the Christian shouldn't be joined together with an unbeliever. It's saying is that an unbeliever has a different nature, a different essence, a, a different core than a Christian. Just like light has a different nature than darkness. Christ has a different nature than a false god. And righteousness is a different nature than wickedness. The Bible gets further clarity in this in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 10. It says, don't yoke an ox and a donkey together. Why? Because in essence, their natures are different. And when I googled information about donkeys and oxen, the difference is, is that donkeys are more rebellious. They tend to do things their way. They're more stubborn. They're more resistant. And oxen have a tendency to be more submissive, more docile, and will follow the commands of a leader or a master. <laughs> a yoke was this thing that just joined two ox together. So they can pull a plow, turn over the soil so the farmer could plant, and have a productive crop. <laughs> so he put this yoke on the oxen. He put the yoke on it, you know what I'm saying? And they yoked up, and whatever one oxen did, the other one did. If it stopped, the other one stopped. If it went, the other one went. If it ran, the other one had to ran. In essence, it was this yoke that made the oxen do everything tit for tat like the other one did. So the Bible says in Deuteronomy 22 10, don't put a yoke on an ox and a donkey because a donkey by nature is stubborn, is rebellious, is hard headed, it goes its own way. So if you put an ox who is submissive by nature, who wants to obey, with a donkey who's rebellious by nature, who does not want to obey, and you put them in a yoke, what the Bible's saying is they won't be productive. They won't go forward. They won't produce for the master. They'll be tied to each other. When the donkey stops, the ox will stop. When the donkey goes astray, the ox will go astray because they're tied together. Some people are like that. They are in relationships with people where they don't understand, but their spirits and their souls are tied together with a 
unbeliever or with the carnal man or woman or with the ungodly man or woman and you're yoked with them and you can't see that when they go left away from God, you go left away from God. <laughs> you're in a relationship with somebody, oftentimes what they do, you do. How many people do you know that in relationships right now where one of the people started off a strong Christian and now because of the relationship, they're a weaker Christian or now their allegiance to God has gone down. A relationship is meant to join two people together in nature and in heart. And there's so many Christians that are being joined together this way. They yoked up with unbelievers and they don't see that they're being changed. Their essence and core is being transformed to be like a donkey. Now they're more stubborn in spiritual things than they were before they were in the relationship. They're more rebellious now because they're in the relationship. They sin more because they're in a relationship. Their, their, their devotion to God has gone down because they're in a relationship. The productivity for the master has gone down. <laughs> what is the deal? What is the business? Why are we so attracted to ungodly people? Why after all Christ did for us on the cross? Why after belonging to the Lord? Why after, after tasting his grace and his goodness? Why would we want to be yoked up and sharing a bond with somebody that has rejected your Savior, that doesn't believe in your Savior, that doesn't love your Savior, that hates your Messiah, that doesn't obey your God, that doesn't submit to your God, but that flirts with sin, that walks with the devil, that has more fellowship with darkness than with light. Why? 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 <laughs> Why would you be yoked up with Delilah? Why would you, it's like being in a relationship with Judas. Why would you want to date Judas? What about Judas appeals to you? Huh? What do you love about Judas? What? There's nothing lovable about Judas. <laughs> now I know you're thinking like, can you be unequally yoked with somebody that's a Christian? Absolutely. Just because somebody says they're a Christian doesn't mean anything. Judas walked with Jesus for three years and didn't believe in him. <laughs> So I have a little list of why I think Christians get involved in relationships with people that are ungodly, not spiritual, and don't love God. <laughs> Number one, God's word is no longer their final authority. So they're their final authority, or their emotions are their final authority. So they feel like being in love with Judas, uh, with somebody that's, that's carnal and, and doesn't walk with God. Who cares? They're not going to use the Bible as their final authority. They do whatever they want to do. Number two, the pleasures of sin for a season or more desirable to them than pleasing God. Number three, they think they're going to be the exception to the word of God. Like the word of God warns of the dangers of being yoked with an unbeliever. And they think, oh, it won't happen to me because I'm in love. <laughs> Number four, they just got lonely and they took the first thing that came along that gave them some attention. Number five, person was too fine to pass up. Mm, too fine to pass up. We had to get up. Number six, maybe they're just really naive. Or maybe these don't really have a heart for God in the first place anyway, so they really don't care. Number seven, maybe they're with them because they have a greater sense of loyalty to them rather than to Jesus Christ. Okay, number eight, maybe they're with the person they're unequally yoked with because they want to make sure that their kids are going to be raised in an ungodly, carnal, sinful home and will have a great chance of rebelling against God when they get older and going to hell. Number nine, their idea of a man or woman of God was never Biblical. Number 10. I mean, I can change him. I mean, maybe what if he repent? What if he don't repent? What if he live in sin? Number 11. Or maybe they're just not born again. Oftentimes you're attracted to what you are. If you're attracted to unbelievers, maybe you're an unbeliever. I'm not saying you are, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm saying. You know, you should think about it. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. <laughs> God invested so much in us, and I just see so many Christians just wasting their life, wasting their purpose, and the walks with God are going down because they're yoked up with somebody that's an unbeliever at heart. They could be a Christian on the outside, but it's an unbeliever at heart. And you can tell because in the relationship, they're dragging you further and further away from God and from obedience to God's word. <laughs> But I'm just saying, be willing to examine where you are with this person and know that, man, if Satan wants to destroy your life, what better way to do it than to put you in a relationship where you're bound and yoked up with somebody that does not submit and walk with your God. That's one of the most instrumental things Satan's done to throw off men and women of God in Scripture. Hey, read your Bible. You'll see. And yes, I do speak in engagements. So if you want to book me to come out and speak to your school, your church, or just any event, you can book me by going to p4cm.com and clicking the booking tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to live a life that's totally unacceptable. That's totally unacceptable. That's